If you are putting in effort to grow more muscle and it's not really working, that is a piss off. It's frustrating and it's annoying, especially if you're training hard in the gym, you're working on your diet, you're working on some lifestyle factors and trying not to booze and party so much. And it's just not working. God, frustrating. So I created this list of 33 mistakes that I see people making when they're trying to build more muscle. They're gonna be about a minute or so each, super quick and snappy. Just go through each of these as a checklist and make sure you're not making any of these mistakes so that you can get your plan on track and start making real progress. By the way, my name is Mateo. I'm a Canadian coach and personal trainer who helps guys build visible muscle and lose body fat through a simplified approach to nutrition and training. So if you like this kind of video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see more like it. The first mistake that people make when trying to build more muscle is just copying someone else's workout plan. Maybe you see your favorite influencer on Instagram, or you see some jacked up bodybuilder or some you know hot woman in the gym and you're like, oh, well, I'm just gonna do exactly what they're doing because I'm gonna wind up looking just like them, which is just not the case. First of all, you are your own person with your own genetics and your own body. The best you can ever hope to become is a better version of yourself. You're never gonna look like someone else. You're never gonna have a different shaped bicep or different shaped quads. They can only really just get bigger, cool? Additionally, what might work really well for the person at your gym might not work very well for you. Maybe that exercise that they do that gives them crazy bicep pumps and makes it feel amazing for them actually just kind of fucking hurts your shoulders. And maybe while they only need to do two sets a week of squats to really grow their legs, maybe you need six. So training programs are highly individualized and best seen as kind of like a living document, almost like a resume that you update over time and consistently work on and tweak until it works and gives you the results you're after. Mistake two, I probably should have even said this one first, is you need to be consistent. Across the board, you need to be consistent with everything we're talking about here. It's not just like I say, hey, don't copy someone else's training program and you just go do your own training program on one random fucking Monday and then for every other day of the week, you copy someone else's training program. And the same thing is true with showing up to the gym regularly, giving a consistent effort on all the lifestyle interventions you're making, giving a consistent effort on all your diet and training efforts. It's not just about doing it once, it's about repeating it time after time after time and providing a reliable and consistent signal to your body that it's time to grow more muscle and it's time to get bigger and more jacked. These changes don't just happen right away, it takes time and you need to slowly encourage your body to continue making the adaptations that you want week after week after week, month after month, and year after year. So be consistent with it. Besides, you're never gonna know what's working or what's not working if you don't just keep giving that same consistent signal over and over. How can you ever expect to know what's working and, and what's not working. Mistake three is you're just not training hard enough. This is both the simplest thing that you can really fix with your training program and also one of the harder things because it's just straight fucking basic. You gotta push hard to grow more muscle. How hard specifically? Well, when you're doing your curls, if you keep doing curls and then you stop and you're like, eh, all right, I'm done. I could have done like five, 10 more reps. That was good though, I'm getting kind of tired. Guess what? you're not gonna grow very big biceps from that. You need to keep on doing reps, even though it gets uncomfortable, even though your biceps are starting to burn, get pumped, you keep on pulling that weight until you feel like you could only do one, two, or maybe no more reps. And at that point where you're very close to failure is robustly stimulative of muscle growth. That's what makes you bigger. So you need to get at least close to that point of failing if you really wanna grow more muscle. And if you keep phoning it in and just giving it a half sack effort, you're never gonna grow the muscle you want. Reason number four that you're not building any muscle is you need to do more. What do I mean by more and how do you know if you should do more? Well, by more, I mean literally more work in the gym. You need to do more sets to grow more muscle. We know that volume or how many good hard sets you do in the gym has a dose response relationship with how much muscle you grow, which means the more sets you do, the more muscle you grow up until a point where it's not productive anymore. But you might be this person who should add more sets if let's say you go to the gym and you do one set of good hard bicep curls, you're like, ah, good. Even if it was perfect technique and really good and solid effort, you put that weight down you're like, hmm, it's done and dusted. You never really get any pump, you never really get any disruption or weakness or soreness in that muscle after the session. You come back on Wednesday, you do your bicep curls again and you know, same thing. And week after week after week, you're never able to add any reps or any load to the bar. And you're really just not making any progress on your performance, your rep strength. Well, that's probably a sign that you can add some more sets. I'm sorry to all the guys who love the Mike Menser and the low volume training stuff out there, but the evidence is becoming increasingly clear that doing more total work leads to more total gains. Mistake number five, 
do less if you should. Don't do too much work. This is literally just the exact opposite of what we talked about. If you find that you are so fucking unbelievably sore when you go to the gym from your last session, your biceps are still so smashed that you can't give it a good effort. You might be training them too much. And if you do that chronically for weeks, months, and years, you're just not matching your performance every single week. Guess what? You're chronically crushing yourself with fatigue and never are actually at the point where you're fresh enough to give a solid enough effort to send a clear signal to grow more muscle. If you are in the gym crushing your biceps, or crushing your quads, set after set after set after set, and just trying to eliminate the muscle and totally fatigue it so that next time you come in, you're not getting a really good pump, you're not giving a good effort, you're not able to match your reps and your weights and you're not making any progress, maybe it's time you dial things back and do fewer sets or maybe don't train quite so hard so that you can send a clear stimulus that you can actually adapt to and recover from. Mistake number six is you need to pick better exercises. If you are doing exercises that are highly unstable, like squatting on a BOSU ball, you're going to very much limit your ability to generate force and you're gonna directly limit your ability to grow new muscle because mechanical tension and your ability to produce force directly influences how much muscle you're gonna grow. Additionally, if you pick exercises that are combo exercises, for example, where you see people doing this at the gym where they're doing like a lunge to press or like a squat and curl, like, man, do you really think that the same amount of weight that you can squat with your hands here and curl with, you know, bicep curl, like dumbbells like this, is that really challenging your quads? Or is it just enough weight for your quads, but it's gonna rip your fucking bicep off the arm? So selecting exercises that are stable and create a, an environment where the muscle that you are trying to target is actually the limiting factor is a very important thing for muscle growth. And really one of the best ways you can go about this is just getting into the gym and finding out what works best for you, what exercises feel good for your joints and which exercises really target the muscles that you wanna train. Mistake number seven is you need to improve your technique. Even if you have the best exercises in the world, you've selected all the best ones for you. If you're using a technique that is just bothersome on your joints and you are unable to actually really push hard with those exercises, again, you're just throttling the amount of muscle that you can grow because I can only do so much close grip bench press with bad technique that hurts my fucking shoulders that Ah, oh, by the time my shoulder is just so fucked up and sore that I need to leave the gym, my pecs haven't even been bothered. So take your time with your technique. Focus on the muscle that you are trying to grow, especially as you're lowering that weight under control. You really want to be focusing on those pecs and thinking, okay, am I really loading up my chest as best that I can? Am I going as deep as I can comfortably under control? Am I really just not bouncing on that bar off my chest? when I'm using that technique. And you can always play around with your technique, taking a narrower grip, taking a wider grip, maybe flipping your hands in a different exercise, using a narrower or wider foot stance, maybe turning one toe out or putting one foot forward and just finding out what works best for you. There's no way that I can tell you exclusively what's gonna work best for you, but I can tell you that if you go into the gym and use a technique that destroys the muscle that you are targeting while keeping your joints happy and healthy and doesn't bother your low back or any other peripheral part of your body, that's probably a really good technique for you, at least for muscle growth. Reason number eight that you're not building any muscle is you don't get your sleep in check. Check this out. If you're training hard in the gym, you're getting your food in order, you're getting some lifestyle interventions happening, bro, you're putting in all the hard work already. This is the easiest thing you'll do. You pull this nice warm blanket over you, you get your little sleep mask out, you get your little lavender essential oil sprayed on the pillow, you cozy up, just close your eyes and let the dream world take you over, son. This is a critical element of building as much muscle as possible, sleeping at least seven to nine hours a night. I know the real hard part isn't just closing your eyes, it's the practical element of getting in bed at the right time each night and actually making time for sleep. So set a bedtime and get to bed regularly and sleep seven to nine hours a night. Reason number nine that you're not building any muscle is you're too stressed. Think about it, when you go to the gym and you train hard, you do some bench pressing, some squatting, some deadlifting, you are applying a stress to your body. It's good stress, EU stress, that you will adapt to and recover from, but your ability to recover from that workout is drawing from a finite number of resources, a finite capacity to recover. And that ability to recover is the same shared ability to recover from all the stressors in your life. Work stress, life stress, financial stress, relationships, all that shit comes from the same place. So if you're super stressed about work and all these other things, your body's just straight up gonna build less muscle and you're not going to get as much strength adaptation. So 
manage your stress. Firstly, by avoiding stressful situations whenever possible. If you have too much on your plate at work and it's not gonna hurt your career capital by saying no to projects when you're overwhelmed, say no to them. Don't go to events that aren't gonna make you happy that are just gonna make you stressed out. And then secondly, find a way to actually de-stress. Find a way to manage the stress that you do have. I have these reclining chairs, they're comfortable. I sit here, close the eyes, I take deep breaths before bed and just chill out. You can read a book, you can write and journal, you can listen to music, paint pictures, listen to podcasts, spend time with your pets or your loved ones. Find a way to manage the current and existing stress that you have in your life that's unavoidable. You will make better progress, you'll build more muscle. Number 10, everyone's favorite, you've heard this. You need to eat enough protein if you want to grow more muscle. Again, one of those dead easy things that doesn't require you grinding in the gym or fucking, ah, you know, pulling on the bicep curls to actually make progress. It's so easy, you literally just put some beef in your mouth or some chicken or some Greek yogurt in your mouth a few times a day. That's it, just chew that fucker up. It takes next to no effort. I know getting into the routine of having it prepared and ready and easy and stuff like that can be a pain in the ass, but you can make it convenient too. Use high protein milk, like Fairlife milk. Use whey protein powder, use Greek yogurt, use pre-prepped proteins like those pre-cooked sliced chicken breasts or sliced beef that you can get at Walmart or in the store. You can literally buy a kilo of pre-grilled, you know, Cajun seasoned beef that's fucking delicious. It's $5 a package and that'll set you up for the entire week. It is so simple. Uh, but it's one of those things that makes a huge difference. Even for someone who's bedridden, they've shown in uh, scientific literature, Mildred, who has a fucking fused together spine and she's laying in her hospital bed. They start feeding her more protein intravenously and she grows more fucking muscle. No, she doesn't get more jacked, but that effect size is gonna be even bigger for you if you're young, healthy, and weight training, all right? So get your protein intake in check. Anything over 0.6 grams per pound of your body weight is a really great place to start. And if you're exotically heavy, you're very obese, you can use your height in centimeters as a protein goal too, and that'll be a pretty good place to start. Mistake number 11, you are not gaining any weight. Do you need to gain weight to grow new muscle? No, it's not an exclusive situation where if you're not gaining any weight, bro, you're not gaining any muscle. But look, if you've checked out the other 32 things on this list, and you're like, damn, you know what? I got my training dialed, I got my sleep in check, I got all this other stuff going for me that's working really well, uh, but I'm just not building the muscle I want. Man, a hypercaloric diet or a diet that causes you to gain weight over time is a powerful tool for helping you grow more muscle. Not only are you literally providing the resources that your body needs to actually physically construct new tissue, you're also creating an environment through hormonal signaling that is highly conducive to anabolism or new tissue growth in your body. So you're giving it the building blocks and you're telling it, hey, look at all this stuff that's coming in. Guess what? You're free to grow more muscle. There's no scarcity around. We've got plenty. Go ahead and grow. Go ahead and sleep. Go ahead and recover from all your workouts way better. It just creates this hormonal milieu that's like just, just a chef's kiss for building more muscle. So try doing a muscle gain diet for 12, 16, or 20 weeks if you're not seeing the growth you want. Mistake 12, you are training too heavy. Is this 12 fingers? I don't know. But I will tell you this, training heavy, meaning fewer than five reps per set on average, is probably going to be excessively fatiguing for how much muscle growth it generates. We know that sets of, oh, one all the way up to even probably 100 reps can grow you more muscle as long as they're taken sufficiently close to failure. But that doesn't mean that doing only heavy singles, one rep maxes, basically right near failure, is a good way to grow muscle, and why? Because very heavy training is also very fatiguing, both physiologically, meaning your joints and your connective tissue, it beats you up, literally. Also, it's impractical, and additionally, it's very psychologically fatiguing to train very heavy all the time. So keeping it more in that five to 20 rep range gives you a better stimulus to fatigue ratio. Shout out Dr. Mike Isertel for coining that. And uh, yeah, you can just get more high quality work done that stimulates muscle growth while reducing the fatigue side of the equation, right? So you get more jacked with less fatigue. So make sure that the majority of your sets are north of five reps, otherwise you're just doing more hard grinding work than you really have to. Mistake number 13 is not tracking your workout performance at all. Because if I don't track my workout performance, how can I know what to do next week? And how can I know if I'm getting stronger week after week after week? This keeps you honest. You can use a notebook, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, something like that to keep track. If I come in here and I do a set of 10 reps with the empty barbell, which is 45 pounds, I'll write down, okay, I did squats, I did 10 reps with the empty barbell, 45 pounds. That way next week when I come in and I go to do my set of 10 reps again, I can reach over on the plate rack over there 
and I can go grab two and a half pound plates and throw those on either side and then do my set of 10 reps now with a little bit of extra weight. There's just no way that you can keep track if you have a human brain of all the different exercises, all the different weights you do and all the different reps you do week after week. Mistake number 14, you're always switching up your workouts. I get that you want some variety in there, but how are you gonna generate a ton of progress if you're always switching your workouts every single week? It would pay for you to write a novel instead of just writing haikus every single week. Repeat your workouts week after week after week. Yes, you definitely need to add reps, load, or sets, or some combination of the three over time, but you need to stick with a few basic exercises and just get really good at them and get stronger on them and progress on them before you switch things. And don't just change it up just for the sake of changing it. You're just shooting yourself in the foot. Which leads me to mistake 15, which is kind of the opposite side of the same coin. Not only do you need to know that what you're doing in the gym is quantifiable and say, let's say 10 pounds for 15 reps, that's a very quantifiable thing. It's not just enough to have that in your logbook. Next week, you need to go in and add on that. It needs to be 10 pounds for 16 reps. It needs to be 15 pounds for you know 12 reps or whatever. And you need to be pushing for progress. It's called progressive overload. I'm sure you've heard of that, but it's a fundamental pillar of training for muscle growth. You need to be making progress over weeks and months. You don't need to add 10 pounds to the bar every single week, but you need to be adding a rep here or there where you can, or adding some weight here or there where you can, or some combination of the two in order to really adapt to your training. Because if you train with 10 pounds and you do your 10 reps this week, and you do it again next week, guess what? You're actually a little bit stronger next week. Training got easier. If you do that again the week after, training got easier again. If you do it the week after, you're not even fucking adapting for the previous two weeks. You're moving backwards. You're getting back closer to square one where you did that 10 pounds for 10 reps the first time. Be sure you're pushing things in the right direction week after week. And mistake 16 is a lack of variety. Look, I would love to go in the gym and do my Smith Machine Skull Crushers and just fucking press that skull crusher and my triceps just feel like they're gonna burst. They get amazing tensions and pumps and it just feels like my triceps literally are gonna pop. It feels like someone's inserted a bicycle pump in there and every time I do a rep, it's like someone's fucking jumping on that thing. My triceps get so destroyed. That's amazing and it's been amazing for like, I don't know, 16 or 20 weeks, but I know that there is gonna come a day where it just doesn't feel that good and it starts bothering my elbow a little bit maybe. Or maybe I just don't get that very good pumps and, and maybe my rep progress and, and my performance starts to kind of level off. And all of a sudden it just starts bothering my shoulder and, and things just don't feel the same as they always did. I would be a fool to continue trying to jam that square peg into a round hole after the 16 or 20 or 24 or 46 fucking weeks that I've been blessed with amazing progress and amazing sensations and crazy pumps and crazy soreness on that Smith Machine Skull Crusher, why would I just continue to try and force that and keep making that work? At a certain point, you need to have some variety in your training plan. And when things are no longer working, whether that's an exercise or a rep range or a certain amount of sets or a certain amount of days per week that you're training a muscle, you need to adapt. You need to tweak it and you need to improve on it and do something else. Sometimes strictly and solely the fact that you are changing that variable can ignite new growth. For example, I had always trained my biceps once a week and I wondered why they were so small. And it wasn't until I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna do a little bit more work. I started training them twice a week. They got even better results. It was fucking amazing. I was like, wow, for once I'm actually seeing the growth that I want. And then I was like, you know what? Let's try three days a week just to see how things are going. I went to three days a week and sure enough, even better growth. A little bit of variety goes a long way. Just don't do it when things are working. Mistake number 17 is infrequent or bro split style training. If you're training a muscle once a week, you are not gonna be growing as much muscle as you possibly could by draining it more frequently. And you might be wondering who the hell trains just once a week? I'm not saying you go to the gym once. I mean, you're training a specific muscle once a week. So maybe a person, I see this at my gym a lot, a person goes in on Monday and they train their chest. Tuesday, they come in, they train their shoulders and their arms. Wednesday, they come in and you know maybe they train their back. Thursday, they come in and they train their legs. Friday, they do some abs and some cardio and they don't train their chest again until next Monday. So that chest is really only getting trained once a week. And what's going on for the rest of the time after it's recovered, after the first two days? You guess it, not much. And if anything, we might even be moving backwards. We're not making any progress, just probably maintaining in that point. Okay, so be sure that if you wanna grow a muscle, you're training it in the gym at least twice a week and maybe even more frequently 
if you feel like that muscle could benefit from it. Mistake number 18 is a lack of focus. I see this all the time. There's a lack of micro focus and a lack of macro focus. A lack of micro focus looks like this. You walk in the gym, you got your, foot, you got your pants down like this, you just show up to your workout, do a bunch of random shit like this. Uh, yeah, bro. Just phone it in on my sets, not even caring what I'm doing at all. Going to the bathroom or shit my pants, try to clean myself up, don't do a very good job. Come back out, do a few more sets of some random shit over here, and then I go home. Like, I get it, man. You don't wanna train hard. I know, it's difficult. But switch your brain on for a second to the task that is in front of you. I guarantee, if you just focus on what you're doing while you're in the gym, you're gonna get way better results and you'll probably enjoy the process a lot more. And on a macro scale standpoint, you may be phoning in sessions like that regularly, or maybe you go to the gym consistently for a number of weeks and then you just fall off for a few weeks and you forget that your bigger goal is to build a bunch of muscle this year. And if you really wanna get as much out of this as you can, you need to stay focused on the lever moving activities regularly, week after week, month after month, and year after year. Yeah, going on vacation, all that stuff, that's gonna happen, you're a human being, but for the most part, you don't wanna to stray too far from the post and you need to stay focused on the task at hand. Number 19, you actually maybe are building muscle, you're just not tracking it. You're not aware of how to tell for real. You might be expecting a massive, crazy, significant change where you're just super, super jacked and it's like undeniable that you're like, oh my God, is this a different human body? But it can come in smaller ways before you actually see that. Some of those ways are these. Firstly, you can get a DEXA scan, which is a dual energy X-ray absorptometry scan. It's basically an X-ray scan of your body that checks how much muscle, your bone density, and checks how much fat you have. It can tell you very, quite accurately, is at least it's pretty much the gold standard of body composition analysis, how much body fat you have and how much muscle you have. If you get one of those today and you get another one in three or six months and you can see that you went from 15% body fat at 180 pounds to 10% body fat at you know 180 pounds, oh man, you built some solid muscle there, right? So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is by using a measuring tape, a flexible measuring tape around, let's say your chest, right around the nipple line. If you notice that your chest measurement is increasing and your relative body fat level is staying the same, well, that's a pretty good indicator as well that things might be improving. Additionally, you could use progress pictures. If in photo one, your pecs look like this, and then photo two, they look like that. Oh God, that's probably a pretty good thing. And lastly, most importantly, I think outside of the DEXA scan, is your rep performance in the gym, especially for multiple sets and multiple reps across different exercises and rep ranges. Holy, there's a lot to unpack there. Let's look at this super quickly. If I can dumbbell press the 50s for a set of 10 today, but in six months, I can dumbbell press the 70s for a set of 15. Oh God, and there's only so much motor learning and neural adaptations that can occur. And at a certain point, I just gotta have bigger cross-sectional area. I gotta have more tissue, contractile tissue that can contribute to that rep performance. If on the same token, not only do I improve my dumbbell bench, but at the same time, my incline barbell bench press goes up for many reps and my cable flies go up despite me not even having them in that training block. Woo, now we're looking at a very convincing reason that I have indeed gotten bigger pecs. So you got better rep strength, you got bigger measurements, your pictures look good and you got a DEXA scan to check it out. Be sure to stay on track with this stuff because it can be very motivating to track your progress. 20, you actually may be building muscle. You're just being impatient. Now I know this is a platitude you probably heard on every blog post and every video, but muscle growth does take time. You probably know that fat loss takes time, right? Well, I think most people would agree that muscle gain takes probably at least four times as long. Okay, is it hard for me to generalize in that way? Yes, but I just for you to conceptualize how long it takes, it is slow. It really does take time. And here's one way you can kind of think about it. If you do a 16 or 20 week training block with a muscle growth diet attached to it, you're gonna gain some muscle. Are you gonna be a different human being? Maybe depending on where you're at with your genetics and your advancement level, but it might not be totally, totally crazy. People aren't gonna come up to you and shake your hand, call you sir and stuff all of a sudden. But if we take that 20 week muscle growth diet and we double it, okay, now it's convincing. Now you can really start to see it in the clothes and people might start making comments and stuff. If you double that one year muscle growth phase and you take it to two years now, it's just fucking unreasonable that you shouldn't be seeing all kinds of muscle growth and look at your arm and be like, fuck, whose arm is that? This is amazing, okay? So just take your time with this stuff and if it's been three weeks or, or even three months, just slow down, don't beat yourself up over it, 
keep doing things, keep moving in the right direction, keep taking a look at all those quantifiable measures I talked about in the last mistake, but just know that it may take some more time. Mistake number 21, you are not emphasizing the eccentric portion of your reps. What is the eccentric portion? Here you go. This right here, when I lift the weight up, hmm, that's the concentric portion of the lift. When I'm lowering the weight down, that's the eccentric portion of the lift. The same thing is true for every single type of exercise. Concentric, pressing away from me, eccentric, lowering it down. Same thing for squats and just about everything else. And we know from the literature that that eccentric or lowering portion of the lift is at least as growth promoting, but maybe even more growth promoting than the actual concentric or lifting portion. So in order to maximize the hypertrophic response or the muscle building signal you send with that eccentric portion, you want to lower the weight under control. Something like, oh, three to five seconds of slow and controlled lowering seems to pretty much maximize how much we get out of every single lift. Don't just let it drop like this under control really quick and not actually control it. You're being lazy and you're leaving gains on the table. Mistake 22 is a lack of specificity. Training for muscle growth is a specific style of training. And if we muddy the waters by doing too many other types of training concurrently with this type of training, you may actually be dipping into the same bucket of recovery resources and that could take away from the amount of muscle that you're building. Or maybe the entirety of your training is just not super specific to muscle growth. What do I mean by that? Well, maybe when you go to the gym, you're doing lots of mobility work, you're doing lots of functional training and speed and power and agility drills, or training primarily for strength, or maybe doing lots of sport drills that are focused on your sport. Well, guess what? You're just not doing as much training for muscle growth as you could be, which means you're not gonna be building as much muscle as you could be. If that's your primary goal, man, you should probably at least for a certain period of time, shift the majority of your training to really focus on that specific style of hypertrophy training. Mistake number 23 is taking ice baths after your workouts. Man, we just know that this blunts the hypertrophy response or the muscle growth response from your muscles. So don't jump into an ice bath after your workouts. It's not great for building more muscle. Yeah, it's good for recovery, but recovery just means that you're going to be ready to do another session sooner. And getting ready to do another session sooner can actually interrupt the processes that build you more muscle. Don't do this, dumb idea. Mistake number 24 is avoiding lengthened positions or stretched positions in your training. For example, if you're doing machine flies and you get to here and you stop because you're like, yeah, that's all I wanna go. That's great, you can do reps there for sure, but you would build more muscle if you brought that pec deck machine into a big stretch where you feel your chest fibers pulling apart from your sternum and you feel a really big stretch before coming back. We know that that stretched position, especially under load, is highly stimulative and robustly stimulates muscle growth. In some cases, people will train more even exclusively in a lengthened position and do partial reps where they do a lot of their training in this fully stretched position because they know just how advantageous it can be to train in that stretched position. So be sure that you're including deep full range of motion training because not only do you get to use less weight and incur less fatigue on your joints and all that stuff, it actually directly promotes more growth. So don't avoid the stretch. Mistake number 26 is majoring in the minors. A lot of people get so caught up in all the tiny little details about their diet and their training that they lose sight of all the bigger picture fundamentals. For example, I see a lot of guys get really convinced that their supplement stack has to be perfect. Bro, I gotta have my L-carnitine, bro. I gotta have my beta alanine. I got my friggin' pump booster, bro. And yet these are some of the guys who aren't even consistently training in the gym or people who are worried about nutrient timing and their micronutrients and salt and mineral intake, even though they don't exactly know how many calories they're eating yet. So it pays to think of things in a hierarchical structure, meaning we wanna focus on the biggest priority items first, the things that move the needle in the biggest way for us, before we get all caught up in all the tiny little details, which are great and can definitely help, but not until later down the line, till you really have all the basics nailed down first. Mistake number 26 isn't really a mistake at all. It's just maybe a reason why you're not building muscle. Maybe you have low testosterone 
literally. This is a clinically diagnosable condition where you may not be able to build as much muscle as possible due to a number of environmental factors, or this can just be a genetic condition, which literally causes your body to produce less testosterone, which can reduce how much overall muscle you build. The only way to know for sure is to speak to your doctor and get a blood test done. If you have symptoms of low testosterone, like low sex drive, depression, anxiety, sleep interruptions, hair loss, or lack of muscle building, you may wanna to speak to your doctor about that and just get a blood test. They can tell you very definitively if you are within the normal reference range. Even if you are within the normal reference range, let's say you're on the lower side, but you have all these symptoms of low testosterone, well, maybe you're just not as sensitive or receptive to testosterone or androgens, and they may even uh, prescribe a testosterone replacement therapy for you, but there's no way for me to do that for you uh, diagnose or, or prescribe through this YouTube video. So you're just going to have to think about that one for yourself and ask if that is you and then go to your doctor and figure this out for yourself. Muscle building mistake number 28. A reason you might not be growing as much muscle as you could is because you're eating a low carb diet. There's no direct literature saying that low carb diets cause less muscle growth, but we know that low carb diets can have an impact on training performance specifically for higher volumes. And we know that insulin can help us to grow more muscle by shuttling more nutrients into the cell. So we know that by eating more carbs, we can get our body to produce more insulin. We know that we can train harder and probably recover faster from training, which means that we're able to do more training and adapt to more training. Again, not a 100% conclusive one, but I encourage you to experiment with a higher carb diet, especially if you are someone who's eating a keto diet or a low carb diet, and you find your training quality is just kind of in the dumps, Dude, at least for a week, two weeks, or a month, try eating some more carbohydrates. You might feel that your performance in the gym goes way up. You might find that your energy and ability to last throughout the sessions goes way up. You might find that you get crazier pumps in the muscles, like skin splitting pumps. You might find that you bounce back from your training way faster and you're ready to get back into it, you know, multiple days sooner. If you have a lot of those boxes getting ticked, maybe the low carb diet just isn't for you. You might not be building muscle for reason number 29 if you are avoiding soreness. I've heard of lots of people who go to the gym and they'll do, let's say some dumbbell bench press on the Monday. And on Tuesday, they're like, oh, my pecs are so sore. I guess I overdid it. Maybe they'll wait a week and they'll come back in and they'll just go easier next week. They'll do a little bit less weight. They'll do a little bit less reps. Maybe they'll do fewer sets. Delayed onset muscle soreness is not a sign that you did too much. Overlapping soreness between sessions where you're so sore and fatigued that you can't perform on your next chest training day or your next chest training week, that's probably a sign that you might be doing too much, but a little bit of soreness along the way as you're pushing uh, for you know progressively better performance in the gym is pretty much to be expected and might even be a really good proxy that you are doing the things that are driving muscle growth. Things like producing a ton of tension, things like producing a ton of metabolites and some muscle damage can all cause soreness. And a lot of those things sound like the type of things that we need to grow more muscle. Muscle building mistake number 30 is hyper-focusing on sensations. You'll see guys in the gym get in their own head about what they can feel. I got this guy who goes to my gym and you can see him doing these little rows he's doing with his little machine. And he's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. And he's like really focusing on getting that big squeeze in his back. He's like, oh yeah, I can really super feel this. Or you'll see this with girls who are training their glutes in the gym. They're like, oh yeah, I can really feel this hip thrust here. I'm using zero weight boy, can I ever feel my glutes waking up? Great, I get that you can palpably feel that you have a back or you have glutes and you're able to flex and contract them and squeeze them over and over, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're generating a ton of tension. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're causing muscle growth. Instead of hyper-focusing on what it feels like and whether or not you can feel that muscle and trying to build this crazy mind-muscle connection with the muscle, start first by controlling the eccentrics, training through a full range of motion, giving a good hard effort on the weight, and training relatively close to failure, I guarantee you, you're gonna get all kinds of pumps. You're gonna feel that muscle fucking waking up. For higher reps above 10 um, sets of 10, you're gonna feel a burning sensation in that muscle as metabolites accumulate. And a mind-muscle connection is gonna be the last thing you're gonna be worried about when you're pulling fucking hard on the biceps and you're controlling that weight all the way down. You're not gonna have to worry about whether or not your biceps working because you're gonna be sore for three days afterwards and um, so pumped and disrupted within the session. There's gonna be no guesswork. Mistake number 31 is to unnecessarily avoid using certain types of equipment. I'm not talking about this type of equipment. Look, look around. 
You see this gym? This is my garage gym. This is a rusty, ice cold, bent out of shape squat rack with a cheap fucking barbell. This, calibrated competition powerlifting plates, deadlift platform. Your boy is a power lifter at heart. Don't get me wrong, I love barbell training. I love squatting, bench pressing, and deadlifting, getting strong. But if I were to be completely honest, it would be unwise for me to exclusively train with a barbell if I wanted to get more jacked. Yes, high bar squats can build my quads, fucking for sure. Deadlifts, 100% can grow my glutes, my hamstrings, my back, and bench pressing is great for my chest. But I don't need to be dogmatic and say, look, if I ain't training with a barbell, you better believe my testicles are shrinking. There's nothing wrong with training with dumbbells. There's nothing wrong with machines. Varying your training and using different pieces of equipment can have huge benefits. Using only a barbell can cause a higher degree of fatigue for every single rep that you do. Meaning, let's say I'm doing squats to build my quads. Yeah, my quads are getting trained, but it's also gonna blast my lower back some. If I were using the leg press, for example, the only thing I feel is my quads just ripping in half when I'm leg pressing which means I can do an overall higher amount of work throughout the week and probably do more volume and grow more. Additionally, let's say I'm only pressing with a barbell. This is a real life example, this happened to me. All of a sudden I'm like, fuck, my left shoulder is just bothering me. Every time I bench, I feel it. What are my options? Do incline barbell pressing? Do wide grip? Do narrow grip barbell pressing? That's fucking it. If I open my eyes for a second, realize that load is load and how I use it is really just up to me, I can use dumbbells, I can use machines, I can use cables, and I can still train my pecs without bothering my shoulder. So that means I can stay in the game longer and train harder in many different ways. So don't just exclusively think you have to stick with barbells or even just free weights in general, because everything can work. Mistake number 32 is not resting long enough between sets. If you are jumping directly back into your set right after you put down your next, you know, your first set, and your arms are still pumped, they're still tired, you're still sweating, you're out of breath, you're still like kind of woozy and out of it from your first set, you're not gonna be able to give as good of an effort on that next set, right? You're not gonna be able to give a good, solid, meaningful stimulus to the muscle because you're still recovering. So in many cases, resting longer is actually better than resting shorter. Again, an idea that's supported by the evidence here and the benefits of going with a shorter rest period of time uh, to accumulate more metabolites or something like that is not really supported by the evidence. So rest as long as you need. When you are ready and your arms are no longer burning, you're no longer out of breath and you're mentally ready to push hard again, then pick the weights back up and go for it. But don't just stick to some arbitrary number like 30, 60, or 90 seconds and think that you're gonna be ready even though your head's still spinning, you're, you still feel like you're underwater after the leg press, you can barely fucking walk and you're not ready for your next set. But oh, it's been 60 seconds, time to get back on or I'm giving up my gains, right? So just rest until you're ready and then go for it. Reason number 33 you're not building muscle is you're not a constant learner. I'm sure that by the virtue of the fact that you're watching this video right now and you made it to minute 99 or whatever this is, that's amazing. You're learning more about muscle growth and, and how to actually drive progress for yourself. That's fantastic. Never stop that process because yes, building muscle and getting stronger in the gym are 100% physical processes. Doing hard sets of lateral raises and deadlifts and squats and all that stuff. God, is that ever taxing and physically exhausting. But this whole game is also very much a psychological one and a mental one, whereby improving the quality of the inputs that you do with building more muscle improves the quality of your results and your outputs. If you can learn about how muscle growth works and learn how to train harder learn how to train more scientifically and learn how to train smarter and recover smarter and be better with your diet, guess what? You're gonna make better progress. And the way to ensure that that process is always capped out at its maximum limit is just to continually try to iterate, improve, and learn on what you know currently. Keep a little document if you have to, or a notebook or some kind of journal where you just keep notes about all the things you learn. If you're relatively new to this stuff, just start by writing down all the things that you see people write about and talk about. Okay, yeah, training close to failure seems like a good idea. You know, doing sets of five to 25 reps roughly seems like most people talk about that for muscle growth. Write that down, keep a running log of all the things you know and actually document those results and just be a student of the game. The more you learn, 
the more you'll be able to apply and the better progress you'll make. Let me know what I missed from this list of 33 things. And in the comments, just let me know if you disagree with anything or you wanna come after me for something I said, just go for it. Or if you have any actual helpful questions I can help you with, you can leave those there too. Again, my name is Mateo. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see more good stuff like this, as always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.